Alright, go ahead and go. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Welcome, all newcomers, members, and friends of Celebration PC USA, gathered in person and on Facebook Live. Whether you are here today, thank you for joining our community of this faith of worship. Today we invite you, if you need a community to belong to, if you are thirsty for the word of life and want to live as a disciple of Jesus, then join us in his ministry and mission. Friends, know that you are welcome and needed here at Celebration Presbyterian Church USA. This morning, we have the privilege of welcoming Nathan C. Nathan is the Associate Pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Myrtle Beach. Before coming to Myrtle Beach in 2018, Nathan devoted the first 14 years of his church career to full-time ministry with youth in Columbia, Missouri and Littleton, Colorado. Nathan received his Certificate in Youth and Theology from Princeton Theological Seminary, obtained his Master of Divinity with the Concentration in Family Ministry from Denver Seminary, and is working on his doctorate at Union Presbyterian Seminary. He lives in Carolina Forest and is married to Morgan, and they have two children, Tyler and Georgia. I'd like to welcome Reverend C. to the pulpit. Thank you all. I am honored and thankful to be here uh, with you. I, uh, you know, it's funny, I um, work at First Press, um, and I live at the farm, and you guys are so much closer. This is so much <laughs> I told my wife I was going to be home way earlier than usual, um, and, and I'm, I'm glad of that, but I'm thankful um, to be with you all. Our, um, as Tom gets better, we, our prayers are with him, but I would do anything for Tom. We love Tom, and I'm thankful to be here this morning. Word and help to lead worship. So thank you um, for welcoming me, uh, welcoming me here. Um, we now, uh, I now invite you to join with me in the call to worship found in your bulletins. We begin to center our hearts and minds in the worship of God. Come, hear the call of God. Speak of me to my people. We are just the ordinary folks who will listen. I will give you the words. I will always be with you as you speak my words of truth and justice and love. We gather here to worship you, to praise you for your loving presence, and to be strengthened for the calling you have given us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together in the same room, to come before you thankful for what we have, come and bring our burdens the ways we've fallen short, the things in our life that weigh us down. 
We bring our joys, we bring our concerns, we bring it all at your feet. And we praise you this day as we honor you with our voices um, and the meditations of our hearts. Amen. I invite you for the, the singing our first hymn, number 614, Great is Our, great is our God. Lord. I'm totally with you. Okay. Uh, I like Nathan's hot dogs. That's a, that's a, that's a thing. That's my, that's my thing. So we are going to talk about a few things that Jesus did. Meals that Jesus had with different people. And, and the way, uh, the different things they meant um, to, to the people around him. Okay? So the first one, um, we're going to talk about a meal that Jesus takes bread and he breaks it and he blesses it. And this meal was all about hope, okay? So can you take that bread, uh, all right? And I want you to break that, okay? Just tear it up. Tear it, in, tear it in half, okay? Oh, very good. Excellent. You want to tear it again? You can tear it again. All right, perfect, okay? And so we're going to talk about a meal, and it's all about hope, all right? The next one we're going to talk about, Jesus pours water into a basin, and this meal that happens is all about love. Do you mind pouring a little bit of that water from that pitcher into that basin? Perfect. a boy. Nice job. Excellent. Okay. So he pours water, and that meal was all about love. And then we're going to have a third meal. We're going to talk about a third meal. And it's all about, uh, it's all about forgiveness, okay? And I'm going to like this one just because I don't, not that I don't trust you, but I've seen my kids with fire, and it doesn't always work, Okay. And so the third meal will be a meal all about forgiveness. And there will be a fire, a charcoal fire, that plays a major role in that story. Okay? So when, we, when I talk a little bit later, I want you to look for the three meals. The meal about hope, the meal about love, and the meal about forgiveness. Okay? All right. You pay attention. Okay? All right. We'll quiz you later. Okay. Right. Thank you for coming up. Thank you, Elijah. We have a few announcements this morning that we'd like to share with you. 
Um, on each of your pews or chairs, you have your um, attendance or the friendship pad. So if you could please sign that and pass it to your neighbor, that would be great. Um, a little later in the service, we'll be doing joys and concerns. So if you can um, add any to add to our current prayer list, please fill those out and we'll collect those prior to joys and concerns. Just wanted to let you all also know that we'll be having our annual congregational meeting. It's called for Sunday, February the 13th at the close of worship. The session will review the 2021 and present 2022 budget. The congregation will vote on proposed changes for the terms of call for Pastor Tom for 2022. And the session will share um, the information that they've approved as well and ask for your concurrence. Um, Reverend Dendry hopes to return to virtual Vespers this week, his voice permitting on his Facebook page. We are still in need of some ushers, and there's some sign out up out in the narthex, if y'all could take care of that and would like to share um, your talent of being an usher. We continue to have the anchor storage and also internally um, donating personal care items and staple supplies, food supplies for our neighbors in need in Horry County. If you have prayer requests, please email those to Irma Stackhouse in the church office. She'll be glad to share those in our weekly prayer chain and include them in our Sunday joys and concerns. The Ladybug Luncheon, um, we're not going to meet for um, February, but look, stay tuned for our March meeting. The men's luncheon will occur on Thursday, February the 3rd at Tavern in the Forest at 12 p.m. And it's one of y'all's favorite times this month. It is bingo on Friday, February the 4th at 10 a.m. I have not been able to attend personally, but I've heard the games have been pretty spirited. So uh, mark that on your calendar. And then at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Patrice Burkhardt, and she's going to share a little information on our Linton Bible study. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am very pleased to announce that we will hold a Lenten study this spring. Cecilia and I will be co-chairing a study called The Walk. It's by Adam Hamilton. We will meet on Saturday mornings at 9.30 a.m. There will be six sessions starting on March 5th. Uh, in addition to Cecilia and myself, we will also have Robert Callender, Marsha Meek, and Katrina White, who will be teaching the various sessions. We will begin each session with coffee, tea, and most importantly, a light breakfast. Then in the study itself, we will discuss how to walk with Christ, how to follow him, how to grow in him, and how to faithfully serve him. We will be using a textbook, a DVD, and individual prayer journals. If you are interested in preparing, I'm sorry, if you're interested in participating, there is a sign-up sheet out in the hallway. There is a cost of $10, and that is to cover the price of the book. Please know that everyone is most welcome to participate, men, women, singles, couples, families, and even perhaps your friends and neighbors. We certainly hope that you will join us for this wonderful activity as we enter the season of Lent. Thank you. As we enter into our time of worship each week, one of the important things that we do is confess our need for God in our life. We have words of call to confession, but, but really it is. It's centering our hearts and minds so that we understand how much we need God's love and God's forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, Jesus is faithful to forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins collectively and then personally. If you will join with me. Lord, you extend your love and forgiveness, but we too often resist your grace and deny your name. We have followed our own paths, and they have led us far from you. Help us to trust that all we need is you. 
for you have marked us as your own, loving us without limit. Help us to live into your love, so that we can walk in your ways. Friends, hear the good news and believe it. In Jesus Christ, we are fully known, fully loved, and fully forgiven. How good is God, God and thanks, thanks be to God. God. Another thing we do during worship is we together, as one body, confirm and affirm what we believe. Would you please join with me as we together say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Would you please join us in the singing of the next hymn, number 630. Please pass them forward. Um, Terry will be glad to collect those and bring them forward. As he's doing that, I'll share some of our joys and concerns. Please pray for Reverend Dindy for continuing strength and healing as he continues his recovery. Please pray for Lillian Stilgis under care for poor kidney function. Mike Kelly, brother of Kerry Kelly, he continues to battle stage four cancer. Dr. Billy Moore's brother does not have multiple melanoma. He does have a non-malignant blood and bone marrow disorder that his doctors will keep close watch on. Terry Pettijohn is at home recovering after back surgery. I did speak to Bernie yesterday. He's in a lot of pain, so if we'll continue to keep him in our prayers. Brian Moore, cousin of Terry Baker, is battling pancreatic cancer. Please pray for Ashlyn Burroughs for safety, wellness, protection. Peggy O'Neill asks for prayers for a friend's son, 
diagnosed with multiple personality disorder. He is recently released from jail and starting therapy. Prayers for the whole family as they work together for health and wellness. Prayers for Elder-elect Marsha Meek and Nancy Thornburg as they are ordained as ruling elders in the coming weeks. Pray for all the ruling elders, Barbara Branco, Myra Burrows, Nanette Kelly, and Kathy Wechter as they'll be installed. Please pray to have ongoing prayer for all of our session as they lead Celebration Forward in its mission and ministry. Cindy Smith requests prayers for Angela Knitz and Missy Walker, more families, both have lost their daughter this past summer. Pray that faith will get them through this difficult time. Cheryl, Carol Lagasse's former son-in-law, Troy Muddick, is battling stage four cancer. Pray also for his wife, their daughter, and his son, Jake, also Carol's grandson. Please pray for Irma Stackhouse and the family and friends of her son, Patrick Stackhouse. The funeral was held yesterday in Rome, New York. He recently passed away from stage four cancer. Sharon Peters continues caring for her husband, Lee Peters, who is recovering from recent surgeries. Hunter Scott, 32 year old son and friend of Pastor Tom at Shepherd Center in Atlanta for treatment of Guillain Barre syndrome. He is off the ventilator and trach tube, eating regular food and working daily on strength and training to overcome severe atrophy. Pray for his ongoing rehabilitation, full healing and recovery, and for his wife, son, and parents. I'm happy to report my brother-in-law, Stan Carpenter, continues to improve from his bout with COVID. Um, he hasn't been released to go to work yet, but um, our prayers can for his continued strength and healing. Please pray for all veterans for shelter, wellness, and support. Carrie and Nanette Kelly ask for prayers for friend Mike Stakem, who has finished radiation and chemotherapy for cancer, and his tonsils and lymph nodes and is suffering side effects from the treatment. We continue to pay, pray for Jesse Wallace for his relief and healing from shingles. Jeff Walsh, we ask for prayers for efficacy on new rounds of cancer treatment and healing for their son Davis's health issues. Mary Lou Strom has renal failure. She's a friend of Carol Mitchell, if we'll continue to keep her in our prayers. Prayers for Lois Crone in her new um, home in the memory care at Port Sound Retirement Community. Pray for Robert and Rita Callender's son in California, sister in Florida, and nephew Darren Hofer in England as he battles cancer, and also for Darren's wife. Alex and six-year-old son. Mason, Robert's brother in New York, Hugo Jones is suffering dementia and battling COVID. Please continue to pray for all of those infected and battling COVID, all who are awaiting the COVID vaccination, and our healthcare workers and first responders treating the sick. Laura Hancock for strength and emotional healing. Patty Youngblood for health and wellness. We ask for prayers for Ron Plumer's niece, Casey, for her recovery and her family's ongoing support. Kathy Harms for strength, healing, and wellness. Madeline Dindy Tillis is making progress in her therapy and recovery from the traumatic brain injury in Nashville. We ask you continue to hold Celebration's congregation and our ministry and ministry, and ministry in your prayers. Our preschool staff, students, and parents. Please join me in prayer. Dear gracious God, Thank you for this opportunity for us to gather together in community of faith. We realize the importance of gathering together, whether in person or virtually, to hear your word and have our faith renewed. We get caught up in the day-to-day -day things and get distracted from turning to you. We ask you to be with us this morning and enable us to fill your work among us. Lord, we have shared our joys and concerns. Be with those whose names we have shared, bring healing, strength, courage and patience to those mentioned in their families. There are many unspoken requests. Please bring comfort to those and let them know you hear their prayer. Lord, we thank you for never giving up on us, for giving us countless times, and for welcoming us back because we are prone to wonder. We pray that others may know that your grace and your forgiveness. If there are things we can show you, if there are, always, if there are ways we can show your love to others, open our eyes to the opportunities. Help us to see you in those we meet. We pray these prayers and all our prayers in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing the last two verses of Ferris, Lord Jesus. Again, one of the things we always do when we gather together is we understand all the things that God has given us, God has given us, all the things that God has blessed us with. And in response to that, we give. We give back to the work of Christ's church so they can be used in our community. We now invite uh, those, uh, those coming forward to accept our tithes.
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that we're able to bring. We thank you for all the ways you bless us, help with the gifts that we return back to the work of your church, to your service. May, you, may they be blessed as they go and serve others. Lord, we also, I ask your blessing on the words that I say. May you bless the words I say and the meditations of our hearts as we hear your word proclaimed today. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So, when I got an email Friday, my first question was, what am I going to preach on? And um, thankfully, I get a wonderful opportunity. First Presbyterian Church, associate pastors usually don't get this, but I get to preach about five out of every six Sundays. They're at our contemporary service, our nine o'clock service. So I said, perfect. I'm just going to preach on that same thing. I'll just do it again. And then I called Bob. Bob gave me the bad news that the, 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 the passage I preached on this morning was the passage Tom wanted to preach on next week. And so I couldn't do that. And I said, well, I'll just do last week's. And then, because he follows a lectionary, and our church does too, that was the passage. The passage I preached on last week was the passage he preached on last week. And we kept going back. And we eventually got to Advent. I figured you didn't want to hear an Advent sermon. And so we're getting something totally different today. Uh, one of the things that's sometimes hard to do in a one-off sermon, sermons are kind of interwoven. In the life of a pastor, you know, the, the real blessing and joy of being a pastor is being able to walk alongside people in the ups and downs of life. And the, and, and, and everything. And sermons are, are a part of that. They, they communicate some things. It communicates how you lead. It communicates the direction in which you see the church going, the kind of people you want a congregation to, to be, to mimic, uh, how, how we're going to mimic Christ in the world. And so how do I do that today as someone who doesn't get to normally walk with you all through the ups and downs? That's Tom. And so I think it's, it's you know, very clear and, and very doable that I can simply talk about this incredible God that we all serve. No matter what church we attend, no matter what neighborhood we live in, we all serve this God. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to try to do that well, but first I'm going to talk about something I was thinking about the other day. And that's how much I love food. Okay? Is anybody with me on this? Yes? Yes. Okay. I think we think about food all the time, right? The first, the first like little uh, word that we might have a little ice or a little snow. And what do we do? Milk and bread, right? Milk and bread is the first thing. I don't know who is out there making milk sandwiches, but wait, it is milk and bread. That's the first thing we think of. We've got to go get milk and bread. I went to Kroger right over here. Um, last week, no milk. I got the last half gallon of milk in, in the whole store last week. All right? I have already thought about what I'm going to serve. We're going to have a couple over to watch the Super Bowl. That's in weeks. I've already thought about what I'm going to serve at our Super Bowl party. All right? Uh, a goal of mine today is to not talk too long because the closer I get to noon, the less you're going to listen and the more you're going to think about lunch. Yes? <laughs> yes. All right? As a new year turns over, what is the number one resolution that we all do besides buy gym memberships that we're, we're not going to use? What's the other resolution that we do? Yeah, we watch what we eat. I am currently in this because we enjoyed too much food, too much good food over the holidays, right? I'm in the midst of it. That's why I'm thinking about food all the time. We're doing this thing called Whole30. It's something. It's like, it's like eating, but with less joy. And that's what we're doing right now. Thinking about food all the time. Now, as much as I like good food, I think a good meal is even better. And I do think there is a difference there. All right? So we've all had um, really good food somewhere. And maybe the experience of eating that really good food wasn't necessarily the most enjoyable thing. Maybe there's awkwardness with the people you're around. Um, maybe the setting isn't right. The timing of things are, are not good. Um, the, the, everything is good, but the, it's just not great. On the flip side, there are times where I've had very common foods. 
But in the right environment, under the right circumstances, with the right people, they're magical moments, aren't they? You create these kind of long-lasting memories when you have a good meal. There's laughter, there's celebration, there's deep and meaningful discussion. Those, those are great meals. And as much as I like eating food for the taste of things, food's greatest superpower is its ability to bring people together and also, when we're together, maybe communicate something bigger and deeper and more special. Have you ever noticed how much Jesus uses food throughout his ministry? He uses meals to make kind of these transcendent moments happen, how he communicates big ideas in very ordinary places. There are lots of different times when Jesus uses food as a means to an end. Um, he showed people he was unlike any other rabbi when he, when he makes more wine so a party can keep going, right? <laughs> there are, um, uh, he uses meals to invite tax collectors like Levi, Matthew, and, and um, Zacchaeus into the work of God's kingdom. Um, there is food as the backdrop to any number of parables. Now, I could go on, and this is not an exhaustive attempt to look at all of them, but this morning we're going to look at three different accounts. You've got a preview from uh, my time with Elijah. We're going to look at three different accounts of how Jesus said things through food that were bigger than food themselves. How he used one meal to give hope, one meal to show love, and yet another one to extend forgiveness. In the first familiar story, um, we see Jesus at the Sea of Galilee. Um, because of all the things he was saying and the people that he was healing, he started to attract a following, um, and that caused a unique problem. This is from John chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. That's important to remember that. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where should we buy bread for all these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. <laughs> Philip answered, It will take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down, and 5, 000, about 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, broke it, distributed it to all those who were seated as much as they wanted. And he did the same with the fish. Now, at some point, we have all scrambled to put food on a table, whether it's a recipe that you're trying for the first time inexplicably when the company's coming over and it doesn't work out, or you run out of food, we've all had to kind of scramble around last minute to put some food on the table. Time is running out, we have to serve something. So take that, fe take that feeling and multiply it by 5,000, and that's the situation that we've got here right now. This story makes it clear that the disciples are beyond overwhelmed with the idea of feeding all these people. Philip throws up his hands. Andrew brings a couple of fish and a few loaves of barley bread, which commentators um, describe this bread as kind of, a, in quotes, as a cheap bread for men in unhappy circumstances. This is not great bread. And the loaves he brings, he brings them with a comment, a snarky comment, saying, how far can this go? I got these things, but what, what good is this? They have no hope. But simply bringing what they have to Jesus means they have some hope. You might have noticed there's this quick mention, and I pointed it out in the passage, that the Passover festival was near. And if you've or read the Gospel of John enough, you know that there's no throwaway comments in the Gospel of John. Everything mentioned has a purpose. Uh, there's a reason why he says this. At the time of the original Passover, there was, of course, very little hope. The Israelites were in slavery in Egypt, and each time Moses talked to the Pharaoh, 
things seem to just get worse for everybody. But at Passover, God saved them. He delivered them from their oppressors. God showed them that anything was possible if they just brought what they had to God. And so this feeding of the 5,000, that's exactly what happens. People brought what they had, and Jesus showed them that nothing was impossible, that hope was always appropriate. The food might not have been all that good that day. Loaves, common loaves for unhappy men. But it was a great meal. Because the food wasn't the main course. Hope was. Our next encounter with Jesus comes um, from a meal we know all too well, the Last Supper. Um, a time uh, that we, uh, as, a, as a congregation here, I'm sure, uh, you know, celebrates all the time in communion. But more happens than just the words of uh, the words of institution that pastors say. This is from John chapter 13. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes, returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So we've heard this story lots of times, right? Jesus in the middle of the meal, and guess what meal it is? What are they celebrating? Passover, very good. He does the unthinkable. He washes feet. And why this why is this act of washing feet such a big deal? Well, to understand it, let's know the context. Washing feet is the worst job ever, right? It's, feet are gross now. Guys, back then, feet were so much gross. We're, we're flip-flops. And then walk on dirt roads, stepping in everything, and see who wants to wash your feet. It was a job, even... Um, household servants. It was, it was considered too low for even household, household servants. You either did it yourself or you got slaves to do this thing. It would have been unheard of for a superior to perform this act on a subordinate. The disciples are um, incredibly uncomfortable with their rabbi doing this. Anyone ever feel like this? Somebody does something nice for you and it just I, you don't know how to take it. Right? You know, you're thankful for it, but you're like, you apologize, and it's this. Really, that's how they are feeling. They object to this whole thing. But Jesus says, this is how much I love you. I know how comforting it is to get dirt and grime off of the day washed off of you. This is the feeling of relief. You see, when I demonstrate showing the lengths that I'm willing to go, Jesus says, the way I'm willing to serve, and you can do this for others. I don't even know what food was served that night, but what a great meal, right? A meal they would never forget because the main course was sacrificial love. Our last meal comes from the end of John's Gospel. Jesus has already been crucified and resurrected, He's appeared to the disciples already, but he has a piece of unfinished business. He needs to have one last meal with his friends before he descends. When we saw Peter um, last in the Gospel of John, outside of him sprinting to the empty tomb, we saw him terrified as Jesus was being tried and crucified. At three different points, it is well documented, he denies even knowing Jesus because he's afraid for his life. Think about Think about the weight that, that Peter is carrying around. We've all done something that we regret, um, that weighs on us. Uh, words that we said and, and we wish they never came out of our mouth. And, and Peter is carrying this weight around. Jesus was the Messiah P, uh, Peter hoped him to be. And when going, the going got tough, Peter let his Savior down. How could Peter go on? How could he continue in ministry after this 
of his failure. The self-doubt must have been crushing. But Jesus wasn't ready to give up on Peter yet. So in this story, the disciples are out fishing, and they see Jesus on the shore cooking breakfast over a charcoal fire. The last time John had mentioned a charcoal fire in his gospel, again, John, John notes these things well, was the setting when Peter denied Jesus. Again, these details matter. Anyway, the disciples rush to shore. They notice it's Jesus. They rush to shore to eat with Jesus. And we pick up as the meal is finishing up from John chapter 21. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now, at first glance, this passage seems almost cruel, doesn't it? We get it, Jesus. Peter messed up. We don't need to have you keep asking him if he loves you. But what he does here is actually a beautiful act of forgiveness. Every time Peter denied Jesus, Jesus gives him, for every time, Jesus gives him a second chance to answer that question. Has anyone been able to retake a test before in your life? At some point, <laughs> has someone given you a redo on something? And if you have, you know the grace that is given in order for something like this to take place. And that's what, that's what Jesus is essentially doing here. He's letting Peter retake the test. At the end of the test, there's no mention of his failure. In place of correction is a commission. Feed my sheep. Peter, stop carrying around the burdens of your mistakes, the ways that you fail. You can do the task that I chose you for. I did not make a mistake. In a humble breakfast on the beach over a charcoal fire becomes a life-giving meal for Peter where the main course is forgiveness. We live in a world where we are obsessed with food. And food can be the backdrop of some pretty incredible moments. But the thing I need to keep reminding myself, especially on this diet, is that food is temporary, right? The best food doesn't even satisfy you for a whole day, does it? Right? It's temporary. It's fleeting. The main courses, though, of hope, love, and forgiveness, they never run out. I don't know what each one of you are going through this morning. I don't know what you're wrestling with. I don't know what's going on in your lives. I'm just, I'm here for one Sunday. The Lord knows we all have enough to worry about, don't we? What I want you to know is that Jesus offers something more incredible and life-giving than the best food you've ever eaten. And I want you to know that your God is for you and not against you. And I want you to know this God is always there to serve hope, love, and forgiveness wherever you need it. That's what makes today a day where God's name is worthy to be praised. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 307.
reminders. First, I'd like to thank Reverend C for being with us this morning. Thank you so much. And then just a couple reminders. We're looking forward to Tuesday evening Vespers um, as Tom continues to heal at 7.30, so just stay tuned to the Facebook page, and that'll let us know if he's able to uh, be with us on Tuesday night. A reminder of Thursday's men's luncheon at Tavern in the Forest at 12 p.m., and then bingo on Friday at Celebration at 10 a.m. Your charge for this morning is this. Two, whatever you're going through, remember that God is always there to provide and serve hope, love, and forgiveness. Give God whatever burdens that you have and know how much God loves you. Receive the benediction. May you go from this place. Children of the covenant, loved children of God. May you go serve in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 